Good morning, I am Bridget Washington, chef and cookbook author. Today at this Facebook Live presentation, we are here at the Dinah E. Gore Teaching and Research Kitchen at NC State. Today, we are talking about all things kale and sweet potatoes. We are going to delve into three cold weather recipes that are simple, satisfying, and expedient. So let's get started. There is a reason why kale is known as the cheapest health insurance. It is the most nutritionally dense plant food in existence. Kale is high in vitamin C, vitamin K, and antioxidants. There are also properties in kale that are strong, that have strong medicinal purposes. For instance, it lowers blood sugar, it lowers blood pressure, and it is a cancer-fighting agent. The whole, the whole plant could be utilized, stem and leaves, in multiple preparations. You massage it and eat, have it raw in a salad. You could roast this as it is and make kale chips with a quick season of salt and pepper, and you could steam it or pulverize it in a smoothie. Next, there's the sweet potato. This edible skin tuba is high in vitamin K, potassium, as well as beta carotene. Sweet potato, unlike a regular white potato, has a lower glycemic index, and that is the biggest difference between a sweet potato and a regular potato. Sweet potatoes are also very, very good in lowering blood sugar. There are multiple uses for sweet potato, some of which we're going to identify today. So let's get started with our first recipe, a white bean and kale soup. What I love about this recipe is that the white beans does much of the heavy lifting and elevating a simple vegetable soup into something very beefy and satisfying. We're going to start. So we're going to have our olive oil. And then to the olive oil, we're going to add our aromatics. Here, we have a white onion that's been diced. Celery that's been diced. As well as some carrots. We're going to saute this on medium-high heat. Next, we're going to add some garlic. And this classic combination allows these flavors to really shine. What also I like about this soup is that the addition of lemon zest and lemon juice allow the soup to sing with some unexpected flavors. So once the vegetables are all sauteed, we're going to add our lemon zest, which is the last zest of one lemon, as well as our cannellini or white beans. And this here is two kinds. Next. We're going to add some water into the soup. And all of this is going to come together beautifully. So this soup simmers for about 20 minutes. And when it's done, you have something that is very satisfying. Next, the end, end part of the soup is to add the kale and allow the kale to wilt, and this should probably take about two to three minutes. To the wilted kale, we're going to season to taste with salt, 
pepper, and the last part, lemon juice. And as you can see, something that some very unsuspected ingredients are really, really played up in a simple preparation that is will warm, that is warming and satisfying. And here we can see it. And that's our white bean and kale soup. The next, the next recipe we're going to do is our sweet potato and Thai stew. For our sweet potato and Thai stew, we have here diced sweet potatoes, onions that have been sliced lengthways, ginger that's been diced, garlic, some sesame oil, and coconut milk. And what I love about this dish is that this is a very adaptable way to really hone in on those exotic flavors of the Orient and allow them to come to, to, come to life in a way that takes only 20 minutes. So, we're gonna have our sesame oil. Heat the sesame oil. Next, heat the aromat sauté the aromatics in the sesame oil. Here we have garlic that's been diced, followed by some fresh ginger, and you can really smell that ginger coming out, that pungent aroma of ginger. Followed by onions. And we're gonna let all of these flavors melt and come together. And in this dish, the, the ginger, does is a workhorse of a meal in that a little bit of ginger goes a long way. When these are sauteed, we're going to add the sweet potatoes. And we're going to allow these flavors to come together. Next, after the sweet potatoes, we're going to add a tiny bit of water, followed by coconut milk. And the coconut milk and ginger is a flavor combination that's aged all. And this is a simple way in which the everyday ingredients found in any supermarket can be leveraged for something that is not that is unexpected and really brings out new flavor profiles in your weekday cooking. And this simmers for about 20 minutes. When it's done, a little bit of cilantro as garnish Takes this, takes this stew, the sweet potato Thai stew, into a way that is tremendously delicious. Served over some steamed brown rice. <clears throat> this sweet potato stew makes for a workhorse of a weekday meal. And the thing, what I love best about this is that I don't really miss the addition of any type of meat or any type of protein. Yes, 
You could easily add chicken or seafood to this, but the sweet potato really does carry this meal and holds it on, holds its own against the heft of the coconut milk and the ginger. This is a dish that time and time again I go to when I'm looking for some when I'm looking for a different flavor profile to season my week, and I really just want something that will be satisfying and warm, but also quick. And our last meal that we're going to feature today is a combination of both sweet potatoes and kale. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make a sweet potato kale bolognese. And I know what you're thinking. Usually a bolognese has a lot of meat. But what is the meat? The meat of the meal here is actually the heftiness of the kale combined with the heftiness of the sweet potato. In addition, this meal sings with so many classic Italian flavors that we've come to know and love, but we, it's used in enterprising new ways. So, so here we have some olive oil. And next, we're always sorting our aromatics in the olive oil or whichever fat. So we have our onions, followed by garlic. Next, we're going to add, while these are sauteing, we're going to add our sweet potatoes, and this is a small dice. Whereas in the other recipe, we used a larger dice. This, the smaller dice really allows you to mimic that feel of having something a little bit meatier. Followed by a can of tomatoes. And again, a can of tomatoes is just a perfectly, perfectly substitute for fresh tomatoes, especially during the winter season when tomatoes aren't yet at their peak. We're gonna season this with, with some oregano and allow this to simmer nicely and to have all of the onions and oregano and garlic really meld under that nice juicy acidity of the tomatoes. We're gonna do a quick season with salt and pepper. And then we're gonna add our kale. And as you can see, this kale is chopped a little more finely, rough chopped a little more finely than what it was in the white bean soup. And again, because you really want to mimic that feel of having something ground. And then when it's finished, we have something that looks like this. We're gonna garnish with some hand-torn cilantro, some hand-torn basil. And the basil really does allow all of the flavors, all of these Italian flavors, oregano and garlic and olive oil to really come out to play. We are going to serve it over some whole grain, pasta and there we have it a kale and sweet potato bolognese that really harnesses on flavors that are already in our pantry and ingredients that are accessible these three dishes the kale and the white bean soup, the creamy sweet potato Thai stew, and this kale and sweet potato bolognese are very simple ways that are quick, comforting, and also affordable to really bring in the nutritional umph of these two main ingredients into a variety of preparations. Thank you.